Welcome to Metaphysical Soul Speak. I'm your host, Elena Fox Starks. Hey guys. So I got through my crazy day yesterday. <laughs> oh God. I mean, I got so wrapped up in some ego crap, man. Uh, just when you think you're, it's safe to jump back into the sea of spirit (laughs) Uh, and the sharks of ego get you oh god well it's all okay I went and reread that uh, email that was bugging me and he said you know don't be surprised if people don't get back to you right away because you know people on here are really relaxed and not as addicted to technology It's like, I think sometimes your ego will like change things around to make you more like to make a situation more inflammatory. Damn it, man. (laughs) And then I get on something and then I just can't stop. It's like the OCD or I don't know what. I don't know. I wish I had better OCD as far as house cleaning. (laughs) I mean, that one would be freaking helpful, right? (laughs) <laughs> I always thought it'd be a perfect maid to have, you know, someone with the OCD. And I, I met one woman who had OCD and it took her like five hours to clean my kitchen. And I realized that maybe I don't need someone with OCD. <laughs> like $25 later or something. No, it wasn't. It was like $50 later. I gave her $10 an hour <laughs> in California. $50 an hour later or $50 later and bleh, my living room still needs cleaning I was like Ugh. I was happy to give her the money she had a little baby and she was a single mom but I mean it was just ridiculous Ugh. anyway yeah, but God bless her she was really fun to talk to anyway <laughs> alright so Yeah. Yesterday I recorded that show about the Andromedas. And towards the end of the show, they were, at least in spirit, sitting here with me. They asked me if I want to go back to Andromeda. I'm like, yeah, I'm single now. I mean, I'd love to go live 30 more years there, you know, and then just come back four hours from now. (laughs) So I'm recording this early in case it happens, because, I mean, I'll let you guys know. (laughs) So I had recorded everything. I had added the music, you know, to the segments. I had done all the the behind-the-scenes stuff. I'm getting ready to publish right when my finger was hovering over the publish button. (laughs) Um, My whole phone screen goes black, and I feel like a really small minor like shock electrical style shock but it was more of an energetic shock in my right hand that I was holding my phone with and when I I had a and then the and then the app shut down the phone just kind of blitzed out for a minute and I turned it right back on And it's an hour later. Guess what happened? I have an hour of missing time. (sighs) And there was no... It said this show was blank. There's no segments to this episode. So, what the hell? I had to freaking redo it. um, Add everything back in. And luckily, the parts I had recorded were still there. Thank God. If they don't play all the way through, let me know. I I played it on my phone and it was okay. But so I was like, really like, how did it take me so long? You know, sometimes I lose track of time. You know, I don't really focus on uh, the fourth dimension and the mental constructs and thoughts, thought forms, um, you know, that's in the fourth dimension as well as time time is the fourth dimension or in the fourth dimension so I don't know I'm like whatever okay so this is weird 
So I finished my show. I published it. Um, I was getting ready for bed. And I went into the bathroom to brush my teeth and splash water on my face. And I noticed a scoop mark out of my face. About a week ago, I have another scoop mark that was taken out of my forehead. And right above that one, there was another one that's just taken out last night. So I was abducted for an hour. (laughs) I don't know by who, but I don't feel like it was benevolent. And then I look down at, as I'm washing my hands, I have seven scars on my arms, on the backs of my arms and fronts of my arms, and bruises that were not there an hour before. Two of the scars are along um, a main uh, vein in my arm on my right side. Two of, I have like needle marks on um, my wrist where my wrist, you know, arm and hand meet um, along a vein. And then, uh, I don't know. I mean, I've been really thinking about it and meditating on it. And today the answer came from my higher self that they were negative beings trying to inject me with something physically to hold me back from ascending. (sighs) Didn't work. Screw you guys. (laughs) Yeah, it didn't work, but I mean, my body looked like I went through a struggle, like an accident or like some kind of medical horror gone wrong. I mean, I don't know what happened, but I got out of it. I'm here. I'm back. They brought me back. I think they injected me a bunch of times with stuff and then they thought that was just going to work. So for like 40 minutes, I played a rife frequency. My abdomen was really swollen, like really swollen, you know? So I'm like, well, screw that. I did the anti, <laughs> I did the abdominal, abdominal swelling rife frequency, like from the zap, Z app. And that was like 40 minutes and that helped my body to detox Whatever it was that these people had injected me with. I'm probably going to have to do a couple more programs just to make sure. But I'm still vibing high. And in the morning, the sun came through my window and communicated all kinds of love to me. So I feel like I'm still on track. But I mean, it's freaking scary, man. Like, What the hell was that? So that happened, and then I decided to try to contact the future, because I told you guys I think I found a new way to contact the future, a new way to do it. So I'm still experimenting with it, and once I've perfected it enough and figured out a way to explain it, (laughs) then I will probably do a show on it, because a lot of you have expressed interest in anything to do with timelines, time traveling, time jumping. So I'm going to probably try to do that in the future soon. I'm going to keep, keep working at it. Um, this time I talked to somebody else in the future, but it was more like I was able to, uh, rewind their day and play it back and this is only three months out because before I did it, you know, next January. Now I did three months out. So I kind of replayed conversations that this person had had during the day, almost like a tape. And I was rewinding it. Oh my God. You guys, you know what a tape is. And it's been like a million years since anyone ever used tape. Um, but it's just like a recording, you know, when something happens, it is recorded automatically on the high priestess's scroll. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> In the Holy Tarot, we have the High Priestess. And she is holding a scroll. What that represents is the Akashic Record. And the Akashic, Akashic Records are stored in that person's uh, body, possibly their aura for the day or two, um, or one of their bodies, I don't know, maybe a mental body. It's also stored on the magnetic grid of the planet. I think it's a magnetic grid. It might be another grid. It might not be the magnetic one. It's probably, is it the magnet? Okay. My higher guidance says, yeah, it is a magnetic grid. Is it affected by the sun and all the stuff's going on? It's not affected by that. It's deep, deep, deep in the planet, my higher self just said. So, you could replay it, you know, like the Akashic Records for someone, but you cannot, at least I was not able to talk to this person directly from the future. But that's because they don't know I'm going to talk to them in the future. They don't know to talk to me in the past, especially when, when I saw this person, he was with me in the future. So it was like, oh, all right, well. That's not going to work. So you can only talk to yourself directly in the future, I think. It warrants a lot more experimentation, so I'm going to keep up with that. It's super interesting and fun and kind of wild to do. <laughs> Ooh, so let's do that. <laughs> so that happened. Um, last night or yesterday afternoon before I, I had the bad part of my day when I was still in the good part of my day. And I've got, I didn't mention it yesterday because I was stuck in the ego again, stuck in that bad. And that, in that energy, it's probably my fault. I got abducted by the archons or whoever took me. I, you know, because I let myself kind of falter a little bit. I let go my protection for a minute and I don't know, accept responsibility for it and I gotta keep my protection my protection layers up and my high vibration and maintain that high balance but before all that happened before all the negativity happened in the later afternoon and evening what happened was um I was listening to a couple different messages from people, channeled messages, and I think I was listening to a Paul Butler um, on his channel. He reads from Michael Love and other people, and I just like his voice. He sounds like um, my old friend Alex, and um, I miss Alex quite a bit, so it's kind of nice to hear a voice that's similar, you know what I mean? It's kind of a comforting thing. Because, I mean, I could go and read the articles myself, but I'd rather have someone else read them to me anyway. And I love Paul Butler. He's a great guy. So I'm always listening to his channel. I'm always mentioning him, right? <laughs> so I was listening to it, and then the video ended, and I just just sitting there by myself and kind of watching the sky out the window like I always do. And... I started thinking, you know, I really think that the Pleiadians are very friendly and very open and very loving and they're a lot like us and they have a friendly everything, you know, there just seems, they seem like they have a great sense of humor and they were on the planet. They were on this planet. They built Easter Island. If you listen to the cryon channelings, the Pleiadians were responsible for what's on Easter Island. So... I don't know if that means they destroyed the trees or not. I mean, that's weird, right? I'd like to get a little more clarification at some point on that. But so I did a meditation and I said, I would like to be connected with any uh, Pleiadians that may or may not be listening or that may be listening. Please um, contact me and tell me. And someone contacted me like right away. And I'm like, hi. And he, and he was standing in front of me. Like I couldn't see him with my eyes. Again, I have to shut my eyes to see with my third eye the person and I'm like hey what's up and he said it was he was happy and pleasantly surprised to contact me and I'm like well do you talk to anyone who asks and he said yes 
if I'm available, otherwise somebody else will, right? So it's like a telepathic telephone <laughs> to, you know, the cosmos. And so it was wild. I'm like, all right. And I'm like, so what's your name? And he said, well, my name is Michael Sherhan of Ashtar Command. And <laughs> And I don't know if you guys listen to any channels at all on YouTube, but several people have been channeling this guy. So it was very interesting. We had a lovely conversation. I said, you know, I would like to someday see your ships. I'm very, very curious. He said, well, do you want to work for us or do you want to just go on a vacation for two or three weeks? Like, well, let's start with the vacation and see how I feel after that. <laughs> you know, I, I'll, you know, jump into the water. I'm not just going to dip my toe and see it in the sky. I mean, I'll jump in. I'll get on the plane. <laughs> I'll get on the ship, the light ship, the triangular light ship. Why not? And he said, well, if you decide to work for us, I could see you being a commanding officer in 10 years. And I'm like, What? Is that ego flattery? Are you trying to get me through ego? Is this like a trick? You know what I mean? It's like, you know, and then my mind's like, huh. All right. Well, let's be a little skeptical and logical here. But no, he's like, no. He's like, you have um, not worked with the Pleiadians before, but you know us in other lifetimes and other dimensions where you know us. I'm like, well, you, I do feel comfortable with you. I felt his energy was like an old friend. All right, cool. Sounded awesome. And he said, so you're, you're going to... You know, well, you know, when you're ready, when you, but you have to raise your vibration quite a bit up, 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 because we can't lower our vibration down because we're trying to lift the planet. Otherwise, you know, because if they could lower their vibration to meet me in the middle in the fifth dimension, you know, but I'm on the lower end of the fifth dimension and they're in the higher fifth to seventh right now. So I have to keep working at it, keep raising my, you know, vibe up, up, up. <laughs> you know, like we all do. We all do. But how weird was that? If you guys experiment with this, let me know what your results are and who talks to you. Because, you know, the first time I heard this, I'm like, oh, my God, this guy's schizophrenic. You know, like, what? <laughs> and then I saw another channel where they're channeling the same. And I'm like, they're just copycatting a schizophrenic guy. You know, like my judgmental ego was involved. And I'm like, what the hell? But now that I've experienced it, I'm all, oh, well, pfft, okay. You know? <sighs> uh, you know, what's funny is I, like a couple, three or four months ago, I dropped acid. I took LSD. And when I did, I went to the ninth dimension and I talked to the architects of light and color. And then... About a week or two ago, somebody who I know and love very much contacted me and said, yeah, I just, I've been taking LSD almost every week for like a month. And I've been talking to, you know, beings in the ninth dimension and I saw how they make color. I'm like, oh my God. So, all right. That kind of validated my experience, even though I didn't need validation. It was nice to have the validation, that backup. I'm like, all right, cool. Then I'm getting on um, Aluna Ash, her uh, uh, YouTube channel, and she doesn't talk about doing psychedelics. She's just a meditator. I don't think she does any drugs whatsoever. But she's been talking about the ninth dimension and the energy that's coming from the sun, and I've been feeling it. And I'm aware of it now. I don't. I'm not. Haven't done, you know, LSD in a long time, but. I was feeling the same exact thing as what she was saying. I'm like, oh, there we go again. There's another confirmation. So I feel like the more we go up, 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 the more confirmations we're going to get from many different sources. Woke up this morning. There was a red van parked outside. And on the door, it said 33. So I got to look that up. (laughs) <laughs> when I come back, I'll probably tell you guys what 33 means. It had a bunch of uh, letters and numbers on top of the van, too, which is very strange. But really what... Oh, and then the letters, it was AAP. So numerology, that'd be 117. 
and then it said 599. So I'm going to look all these numbers up. <laughs> I mean, it was a bright red with white letters. It was like almost like he was parked there waiting for me to w- look at his van so he can leave. It was so crazy. I'm like, that's so weird. I mean, not that my ego is so big. I think that random people park here, but I mean, it was very strange timing. And now that I'm saying that, I'm looking in the sky and there's a cross. An absolute, like a Hecate cross. Okay, now it's changing. Very wispy clouds here will make uh, little symbols every now and again. So I don't know, that might be a message for somebody. Now it's gone completely, just in two seconds. The minute I mention it, it's gone. Yeah. There's nothing else out in the sky. It's like kind of an overcast day and clouds are beautiful you know but they're just kind of normal looking okay maybe not totally normal now I see a um, Pythagorean triangle with the right angle I don't know if that means anything to anybody but now it's gone the minute I mention it So, yeah, the clouds here are very active and they're very reactive to our thoughts. I don't know if it's because we're on the equator or if it's just because I'm in the fifth dimension. I'm noticing this now. I want you guys to tell me what you come up with if any of this stuff happens to you because go back and listen to my chaos and clouds. (sighs) But I've been seeing faces in the clouds that look like an oil painting of just a face like like a really intense three-dimensional face that looks solid you know and then it's like perfect and then it just starts to melt back into the sky it's very weird I don't know guys so there is that and very early in the morning I was contacted by a Gila monster that I once met in the Arizona desert. And he told me he was scared. And I was the only human he'd ever met or contacted. I guess he somehow recognized me from heaven and being an animal trainer. I'm like, okay, so what's going on? What's going on with you, buddy? And he was big. He was so much bigger than I remember. So he had grown. Well, it had been like 15 years or, well, no, God, 17 years, I think, since I met him. So he had gotten to be old, you know. I don't know how long Gila monsters live. Maybe he had been reincarnated and came back. But anyway, he knew me. His spirit knew my spirit. And he came to me and he said, I'm so scared because I'm dying. We're all dying here in the desert. In Arizona, it's so cold. And this has never happened before, and we don't know what's going on. Like, well, you can stay with me, honey. If you do die, your spirit can stay with me for a couple days. It is cold. It's colder in the U.S. than it has been, maybe ever. The world is changing, but you're not going to really die. You're going to be fine. And he goes, oh, okay, because he didn't remember that he could go to heaven. He thought he was in heaven, and he came here, then that's it. He got scared. He forgot. So I said, I hope that you're not going to die and I hope you're going to be fine. But, you know, it was very strange, though, because animals aren't normally afraid of that. I think he was afraid because he was going to die in a non-natural way because it was so cold and he hadn't experienced what he was experiencing at that moment. I don't know, such a strange thing. It does get very cold in the Arizona desert, so I don't understand. Which means now I've got to look at the damn news and see. It must be colder there than normal. I did read a quick uh, blurb on my email. You know how it says the subject lines? I just kind of skim over those. It said something about snow in Arizona. But I just thought, well, I just blew it off. Because, yeah, there's snow in Arizona in the high desert. I blew it off. I didn't think about it. So this Gila monster came came to me this morning. His he walked up to me. 
It might be that he's bigger, like his spirit is bigger, I don't know, than his body. It's probably the case. Our spirits are bigger than our body. Anyway, he came up to me and he just kind of said, well, I died. I'm kind of bummed, you know, (laughs) basically an energy of, I'm just, (sighs) damn, stupid way to die, right? You know, it wasn't in battle or something amazing or, you know, (laughs) just froze to death. And he just was irking him. Like he was a little mad about it, you know? I go, well, you know, you're welcome to stay with me for three days if you want before moving on to heaven or you can move on to heaven. And he said, I'm going to hang out with you for a while. I don't think he'll be with me the whole three days, but he's going to kind of hang out with me for a minute. I don't know <laughs> if any of you guys are like, you know, hip to the Gila monster energy, then you might feel his, his little vibes are with me. I'm going to talk about this on another day, but Pablo Escobar's vibes were with me as well. Or he's with me. The spirit Pablo Escobar has been with me for a while. That's a whole nother day. (laughs) And uh, I've been thinking about an author who someone, he has these uh, supplements that I ordered from him many, many years ago. And we've been talking for this whole time, like six years or something. And I had no idea that he was an author or that he was extremely spiritually aware or that he even knew anything about the Ascension. And one day on my Amazon feed, all of a sudden it came up that I should be, uh, you know, interested, you know, like basically here, Hey, check out this new author or check out this author. We think, you know, you'd like him and it's him. It's Matthew David Hurtado. And he has like three or four books. And I'm like, I've known him for years and he knows I'm a writer. And he never really mentioned himself to me. Like, oh, I'm a writer too. Read my books, you know? I'm like, so silly. Oh my God, that's so weird. And I guess maybe because he writes about the Ascension and we never talked about that. So maybe he wasn't sure if I was aware or not either. So you just don't want to bring it up, right? (laughs) Anyway, we're going to have him on the show. We're going to have him on the podcast. I don't know when, but he's already confirmed that he wants to be on the show. Tomorrow, we're going to do a show about uh, setting personal boundaries. And this will automatically eliminate any potential that you would be pulling in a psychopath, a sociopath, or a narcissist into your life. So stay tuned for that tomorrow they'll be out tomorrow hopefully before midnight California time (laughs) I didn't make it yesterday sorry about that guys but I'm doing my best you know so there was that and what else Uh, it's like one other announcement oh Thursday's for throwback Thursday so we got some good stuff coming up it's always going to get better and better I will be having a review maybe tomorrow more about this app that I am finding more and more fascinating, more and more intense and enjoyable. So for all the light workers out there and the star seeds, maybe that's the first time I ever said the word star seed on the whole show. Episode 53. <laughs> Anyway, um, maybe I'll do the numerology. We're just getting a little bit long, longest introduction ever, but, um, just a lot of interesting and important stuff I felt needed to be said. Some of you somewhere somehow are going to relate to this and find confirmation in my own experience because it mirrors your own. Anyway, um, I'll be right back and I'm going to talk to you guys about, a thing called the pattern on the trestle board and it relates to the Kabbalistic tree of life 
This is an enormous topic. I'm not going to go over all of it today. I'm going to go over the extreme basics of the tree of life and explain how the pattern on the trestle board relates to the tree of life. So stay tuned. (laughs) I like saying that because I grew up hearing those words. Stay tuned. (laughs) Yeah, I've always been addicted to to technology. (laughs) Yeah. I can admit it. Admitting it is a first step. Okay, be back after this. Hey you, have you ever thought about having your own podcast like me? Was it even a New Year's resolution? For me, it sure was. But... As I've been looking into this for months, I was daunted. There's so many questions I had. When I was trying to get this off the ground, I was wondering, how do I record the episode? How do I get it across all the platforms? How do I get my podcast on Apple Podcasts when I don't even have an iPhone? How do I get it onto Spotify and all the other places? How do I get people to listen? And how do I make money from my podcast? How do I edit it? Oh my God, I I had all these questions and I was so confused until I discovered the simple, simple answer is Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free And it is ridiculously easy to use. And now Anchor can match you with great sponsors too. So you could get paid to podcast. All you need to do is record it. You don't have to go out and look for people to advertise on your show. They help you. So basically what I like about podcasting is... I don't have to have a video of myself. You don't know if my hair is dirty or if I'm still in my pajamas or even if I'm wearing makeup. (laughs) Ha ha. And it's so easy. I could do this from the comfort of my own home in my living room using this amazing app right from my cell phone. So easy, right? So if you've always wanted to start your own podcast and make money, by the way, doing it, please go to anchor.fm forward slash start. That is anchor.fm slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters that are already using Anchor. Again, that's anchor.fm forward slash start. I can't wait to hear your podcast and I can't wait to favorite you. Woohoo! Let's be bro- let's be broadcast podcast buddies. <laughs> I'll see you there. The pattern on the trestle board. This is truth about the self. Zero. All the power that ever was or will be is here now. One. I am a center of expression for the primal will to good, which eternally creates and sustains the universe. Two. Through me, its unfailing wisdom takes form in thought and word. Three, filled with understanding of its perfect law, I am guided moment by moment along the path of liberation. Four, from the exhaustless riches of its limitless substance, I draw all things needful, both spiritual and and material. Five, I recognize the manifestation of the undeviating justice in all the circumstances of my life. Six, in all things great and small, I see the beauty of the divine expression. 
7. Living from that will, supported by its unfailing wisdom and understanding, mine is a victorious life. 8. I look forward with confidence to the perfect realization of the eternal splendor of the limitless light. 9. In thought and word, and deed, I rest my life from day to day upon the sure foundation of eternal being. 10. The kingdom of spirit is embodied in my flesh. All right, guys, so that was a reading of the pattern on the trestle board. This set of 11 statements was given to Paul Foster Case, who originally studied under the tutelage of Aleister Crowley and... Order of the Golden Dawn. But he also worked with the Masons. So this is very, very deep knowledge. He went on to focus only on the light. They call it the right hand path. And he decided to start his own school called the Builders of the Atidum. Atidum. A-D-Y-T-U-M. The word Atidum means the temple not built with hands. All Master Masons know that they must build this temple before they could go on to the next level, the next world. My father, when he lie dying told me that he's been building that damn temple for days now and he feels exhausted but he said but it's finally finished and it's a beautiful temple he said a couple hours later he died and my dad was a 32nd degree mason what does 32 mean I can tell you in a minute <laughs> Okay, I don't know if you guys have ever seen a picture of the Tree of Life or the Kabbalah, the Hebrew Kabbalah. It's in uh, Judaism. It's a form of mysticism. And it's a way to explain our world in which it would make sense from a divine standpoint. And a trestle board is a pattern for a ship. You have to have the initial foundation laid before you can start putting the planks on the side before your ship can float and eventually sail away and be having with a a lot of fortitude and strength. So the pattern on the trestle board is a pattern that you should lay as your own personal foundation because these are truths that are true for everybody, whether you're um, a Western hermetic seeker or not. Now, it varies a little bit from the original Jewish mysticism. Uh, Paul Foster Case's version is is slightly different. Not a lot different, though. And I'm going to tell you where uh, how the pattern on the trestle board relates to the ten circles 
on the Jewish tree of life, the Hebrew tree of life. Now, if you were to uh, look at a picture of this, then you might want to pull it up while, um, you know, just look up tree of life um, or Hebrew tree of life. There's, oh, just thousands of pictures. <laughs> just Google it. <laughs> um, you're going to see it. So now the first statement, zero, all the power that ever was or will be is here now. It's a deeply spiritual statement, isn't it? (laughs) But it's reflected in the statement, matter cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be changed, transformed. It's a universal truth in science as well as in mysticism. Now, Paul Foster Case, he started this mystery school, and these secrets were not supposed to get out. But we are at the end of the world. We are at the level of human ascension. And it is all over the Internet, so I don't feel uncomfortable talking about it. However... If you relate to this information, go to BOTA.org and start taking the lessons. You have to write them a letter and say that you are a spiritual truth seeker and they will have to meditate on it and see whether or not you are ready. But if you feel drawn to it, you're probably ready. Don't ever do more than one mystery school at a time. You don't want to confuse your energies. So all the power that ever was or will be is here now. That's just the universal power. The energy, the atoms, the molecules are swirling around you at any given moment. The seen and the unseen is everything together. The power is God. Zero. The no thing. Zero is nothing, right? Well, take that word and break it apart. You have the no thing. Because from the nothing comes the one thing and the many things. Everything that you have in your life comes to you as a direct result of God. And you are God, you see. When you realize that, as I mentioned before in the past week or so, you, when you obtain that knowledge on a visceral level, that's when you become the most humble when you realize that you are the most high (laughs) not the most high you've ever been but I mean you know the most high (laughs) the almighty you are a spark of the great divine you're not the divine itself but you are a spark of the great divine so in essence you are God you are that which from which you sprang and as I'm talking about this, you would not imagine the, the amazing patterns and faces I'm seeing in the clouds. I'm looking out the window while I'm watching this. I'm, I'm recording this in the daytime, and I never do that. So well, <laughs> uh, it's just I'm getting confirmations in the clouds now. It's very awesome. Okay. Now, one, I am a center of expression for the primal will to good which eternally creates and sustains the universe. What does that mean? That is related directly to Kether, crown. This is the divine self. This is the first, the very top in the dead center at the top. I should say the living center. (laughs) Kether, crown, relates to your crown chakra. And it relates to who you are because you are a center of expression for God. You are a spark of the great divine, as I just said. Now, when you go to the right, you will see that there are three in alignment up and down. There are three circles on the Sephiroth. 
and they they are the Sephiroth. There, there's ten of them. There's ten circles. So the first Sephiroth, the first one is Kether, the crown. It means divine self. Now, you know, you go from there to the right, the first one at the top right, which is slightly lower because it's at the second, at, at the uh, third eye level that relates to the third eye. And it's, it's uh, two through me. It's unfailing wisdom takes form in thought and word. Well, where's your thoughts? It's in your level of your third eye, right? So, two is related to the Hebrew word chokma, which means wisdom. This is where your divine life comes from. Your wisdom within comes from your wisdom within and above you. If you open yourself up to it, that's why it's important to keep your pineal gland clean. That's why you need to stay away from fluoride in your water and fluoride in your toothpaste. And you have to detox from that. And there's many, many ways to do that. I may do a show on it eventually. But there's many uh, videos and you know information on the internet to look it up. Now, the third one that goes straight across from Chokma, wisdom, you have Bina, understanding. This also comes from divine mind, understanding. The other one was divine life. This is divine understand, divine mind. So Bina, understanding, three, filled with understanding of its perfect law. I am guided moment by moment along the path of liberation. You open up your third eye to God in your thoughts and your patterns if you want to walk the middle path, because that is most related to the crown, right? Walking the middle path between wisdom and understanding. I talked about this a couple times. That's a incredibly, it's incredibly important. God has a perfect understanding based on our experience. That's where he, God takes all of his information from, right? And, you know, what's where the divine gets it. Our direct experience physically is being, it's feedback. We're biofeedback machines for the one will, the primal will to good, or God, divine. Wisdom. Wisdom and understanding. Wisdom is your life. It's when you're here and you're learning stuff and you're like, you gain wisdom by your experience and God gains understanding by your wisdom. It's pretty cool arrangement, actually. And that is how you are guided moment by moment along the path of liberation. Well, what is the path of liberation? It's ascension, baby. We're on it. We have always been on it. You might not have been aware of that. You might not have been focusing on spiritual things your whole life, but you've always been on the path of liberation, the path of ascension. Oh my God, as I'm I'm saying this, the most beautiful oranges, peachy colored oranges are just in a beautiful pale turquoise sky. Oh my God, this is so beautiful, you guys. And and still, it looks like there's like three suns going down in three different places in the sky. This is, I mean, it's got to be an optical illusion. I know we don't have four suns. (laughs) If we did, we would never get any sleep and we would always be so hot. (laughs) But boy, I'm just seeing the colors in the sky. Boy, it's just the, the more we go up into the fifth dimension, the more I see. And I'm sure it's the same is happening with you. There's a big puffy gray cloud in front of me with an absolute rectangular pattern in it right now popped out like a cookie cutter. And it looks like a door and and below the door is this like white cloud that looks like a rays of light coming through the door. So, oh, now it's looking like a keyhole because it's changed and shifted. I'm going to keep going. This is very interesting. Very interesting. Beautiful indeed. Okay, now four 
again so we went from the top to the right and then back to the left now we're going back to the right the second rung down is related to your throat chakra four from the exhaustless riches of its limitless substance I draw all things needful both spiritual and material This is related to chesed, which means mercy in Hebrew. Mercy, and that is tied to your memory. You have to have mercy for yourself. Give yourself space and grace. You have to have mercy for others. But you have to understand, have the wisdom to understand and have a good memory that you can't give people 100% leeway and let them walk all over you but you do have to give them mercy. And that is directly across now on left-hand side, severity, Geburah means severity in Hebrew. Now Geburah or severity is related to your volition, your will. You have to have discipline and a strong will. And that is related to the statement. Five, I recognize the manifestation of the undeviating justice in all the circumstances of my life. Uh, Justice sure can be severe, can't it? You do something wrong, it's coming right on back to you whether it's in a court of law and and you serve jail time or it's karma (laughs) for crap you did in a past life (laughs) or past year (laughs) severity and when you're dealing with other people you want to have a level of discipline don't you you want to have a not really severe if you went only to that side of it you would be a very severe, very strong disciplinarian, you know, like a cop who's always out for justice, you know, but who also doesn't have the opposite side of that, which is mercy. And once again, we want to walk the middle path. <laughs> You don't want to just be all about justice being served constantly because you have to have the mercy and your heart has to be related to it as well. This is related to your third chakra, mercy and severity, and you've got to walk the path between that. Severity is related to discipline and your absolute iron will, your volition, self-discipline. But you don't want to have so much self-discipline that, you know, like say if you were a martial artist, for example, and you were skewed to the severity section (laughs) of this pattern on the trestle board, okay? If you're on this part of the tree of life and you are disciplined and every day, every day, every day, every day, you have to exercise four hours a day or eight hours a day or whatever you're doing, right? And you have to eat this, and you have to do that, and you have to have da 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 Well, what happens if um, something sad happens in your life? Like someone deeply close to you dies, or, you know, your house burns down, or you just get a cold, you know? You can't keep that level of volition and severity up in order to heal you have to go to the other side to the right hand side of the tree of life you've got to have mercy for yourself and use your memory remember that love that mercy you have for yourself right so you got to walk the path between severity and mercy volition and memory Have the discipline, but also give yourself space and grace. 
Now the next one is directly in the center and it is related directly below the crown, below Kether. And that is six. In all things, great and small, I see the beauty of the divine expression. Beauty. Tepereth. That is related to your central self and it is related to your heart chakra, isn't it? The greatest amount of beauty that you will ever see, feel, taste, touch, or hear always is through love and it's always related to your heart chakra. If you're not in touch with your heart, you're not going to see any beauty in the world. You're not going to be attracted to music. You're not going to be attracted to art. Your world is going to be boring when your heart is cut off. <laughs> It's going to be bore, boring and ugly. Feo. Muy feo. Very ugly. When you don't have your connection to your heart chakra. Oh man, this guy is getting more and more beautiful the more I talk. I'm so in touch with my heart chakra while I'm talking about this that I mean I mean it's surreal. Like the orange is so orange and it's but it's also red and pink and hot pink and oh my god, it's like I can't even explain it other than it's maybe five or six colors wrapped into one and they cannot be pinpointed. You can't open your box of Crayolas today, folks, and see this color in that box. Not in the box of 64 <laughs> or the box of 128. <laughs> I don't think this color is in the box of 5,000. It's pretty interesting, man. And then I look across to the other level, the other part of the sky, and it's just, oh, it's surreal. And there's like a um, pyramid cut out in the clouds and the clouds are grayish blue like a steel blue and then there's a cut out in the cloud and inside that is a four pointed star I really think that I, it's just, I know I sound crazy but I know it's, it's the clouds are talking to us constantly and, and behind that I mean this is incredible this is incredible I <laughs> gotta keep going with the show but I mean woo wee I'm staring at it so you know when we all pass on or you could read my Akashic records you could see this through my eyes I think we can read each other's Akashic records and the more we go <gasps> whoo, and the more we go up into this world into the fifth dimension I think the more we're going to be able to tap into each other the more we're going to be able to <laughs> read each other's Akashic records and see through each other's eyes. It's going to be more than telepathy. It's going to be more than hearing words and hearing thoughts. We're going to feel the feelings and see the seeings. <laughs> oh, God, this is so incredible. <laughs> so incredible. Okay. Now, beyond... Beauty, we go down to the solar plexus. There's, and then once again now, there's two, one on each side. We go to seven, living from that will, supported by its unfailing wisdom and understanding. Mine is a victorious life. If you were to draw a line from Kether Crown to Wisdom and then over to Understanding and down to Seven Victory, Netzach, Desire, that is an exact perfect lightning strike pattern. Well, your divine self gathers its wisdom and understanding and formulates that into victory where you fulfill all your desires 
the desires that come directly from God, the desires of your heart, the beauty when you're in touch with your heart and it's opened up, the desires that you have for your life. When all of that is opened up, is desire that comes directly from God. When I had a desire to move to Ecuador, it was directly from God. Because it seems kind of random, right? You know, I mean, if I was just going to use, you know, my puny little ego self mind, it's like, Ecuador, what the hell? It's like the small little country in the middle of nowhere. It's like literally the name of the country means equator, you know, equal, equidistant, balance, harmo- harmony. It's kind of interesting, but I mean, I never considered I'd want to live here. I was actually terrified of South America when I was a kid. <laughs> I don't know why, but I was. The idea of coming down here scared the hell out of me. I think maybe on some level, deeper level, I felt like this was my spiritual destiny to live here. And I knew it was somehow related to ascension and the end of the world. So, obviously, the death of the ego. It's a little scary, yeah? So anyway, so seven, living from that will, supported by his unfailing wisdom and understanding, mine is a victorious life. If you fulfill all your desires that are directly related to the higher, your higher self, your divine self, God, and, and it's connected to your crown chakra, you will have victory and fulfill all of your desires. But it's also related to mercy and beauty. But it's also across the way, we go to the third rung down on the left-hand side. Victory is the third rung down on the right-hand side. And across on the left-hand side, we have eight. I look forward with confidence to the perfect realization of the eternal splendor of the limitless light. So on one side, you have your desires, which can mean physical desires, material, as well as spiritual. But only when it's connected to, you know, your wisdom, your understanding and your crown, your, the will of God. But you go over here across the way to splendor eight. Hode means splendor. That's related to your intellect. The mental side of things versus the heart side of things. Now remember, the heart beauty is in the middle, slightly above this. This is your level of your identity, your solar plexus. Someone personally attacks you, you feel, ugh, right there. Well, to get rid of that, you... Focus on beauty to lift it up and victory and splendor. It's all related to God, to your crown chakra and your higher self. I look forward with confidence to the perfect realization of the eternal splendor of the limitless light. That's directly related to ascension, realizing yourself. Letting go of the little ego and connecting to your highest, best self, your highest good. That's when you're going to recognize the splendor that is God in you. Now, nine is in the middle. It's directly below beauty, slightly below Splendor and victory. And this is related to your second chakra. And that is foundation. Yesod. In Hebrew is yesod. Foundation. And the foundation, that is related to your vital soul. It's related to your sexuality. 
I believe it's related to your gender identity as well. And that's a little bit um, second, third chakra. Nine is yes, sought and foundation. So nine, in thought and word and deed, I rest my life from day to day upon the sure foundation of eternal being. If you rest your life on the sure foundation of eternal being, you're never going to die. And we never do. We change form. Matter cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only transform. Resting your life, your very spiritual life and your physical life on the foundation that you are an eternal being. And relate that to your heart chakra. And you will never go wrong. Now the tenth one, the very bottom, is Malkuth. Means kingdom in Hebrew. And this is your 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 body. All of that is brought down to your first chakra, your root. Ten, the kingdom of spirit is embodied in my flesh. As above, so below, so above. Kingdom is the very bottom on the tree of life. It is the very last thing at the bottom. The kingdom of spirit, all of that is embodied in your flesh, in your physical body. There it is. And that's related to your first, your primal instincts, your first chakra, your food, your shelter, your fight for survival. When you realize that your fight for survival doesn't have to be an egoic, low-level struggle, and you realize that your lower chakra is supported by the one will, the great divine, You don't ever have to fight anymore. And you don't even have to worry about surviving anymore. Baby, you live because the kingdom of spirit is in your flesh. It's flesh you own. It's your body you own. You are a spiritual being having a physical human experience and it's temporary. It was always a vacation. It was always temporary. This is not where you truly live. And now we are physically raising up and ascending into the fifth dimension. And when we go to sleep, sometimes we're in the seventh or ninth dimension. Some people are going way up there. Beyond that. Someone mentioned the 13th dimension the other day. (laughs) How many dimensions are there? I don't know. Crunch all you want. We'll make more. (laughs) Because we are filled with spirit from the limitless light. But that is how the pattern on the trestle board relates to the Holy Kabbalah and the tree of life. I used to say these words with my husband to our children when they were very, very, very little. Every night before they fell asleep. Because we wanted them to have a foundation and a pattern set up in their subconscious minds that someday they'll get back to. Even if they don't focus on it now, they will be focused on it later. And on some level subconsciously, they're always going to know who 
and what they are and where they come from. So if this has been a super confusing episode for you because you don't know what what the Kabbalah is, I'm going to read to you what it is right now. Um, Taken from the churchofmavisradio.com website, I found an amazing picture, so I was going by that picture. But it does line up with the other things. So Now, Kabbalah is a noun, and it means the ancient Jewish tradition of mystical interpretation of the Bible, obviously the Torah, the beginning Old Testament, first transmitted orally and using esoteric methods, including ciphers, it reached the height of its influence in the later Middle Ages and remained significant in Hasidism. In the Hasidic Jewish traditions. See, I, I um, even though, you know, you guys know I grew up, well, Catholic and then Lutheran, and then I gave up the Christian thing. And then um, I looked into um, Judaism quite a bit. I studied Kabbalah, and I'm a Muslim now by religion, but I'm not a religious person. I am a uh, spiritual seeker, truth seeker, self-realization master in the making (laughs) anything that has spiritual truths into it I'm into it you know anything with spiritual truths there I accept anything that's truth is truth truth is truth love is love truth is truth according to this website which is absolutely true it says uh The pattern on the trestle board is a set of statements relating to the the ten divine emanations of the tree of life of Kabbalah. It is both an affirmation of reality and a meditation technique. And one more final thought about the word Kabbalah. Break it up into two words. You have Kabbalah and the Kabbalah is what the Muslims that go to Saudi Arabia is they go to the Kaaba the Kaaba Allah the house of God the place the original first place of worship which I'll go over that maybe I'll have a whole maybe I'll have a whole show on it it brought me to my knees and made me cry first time I realized when I read the story. No, it's an it's a remarkable story. But the Kaaba Allah, the Kaaba Allah, Allah means God. It just means God. It's like saying Dios in Spanish means God. You know, don't let the you know the words or the languages fool you or scare you. It's just another way of saying the same thing. Love is love is love. Love is amour. <laughs> amour. Amour. <laughs> so, it is what it is, guys. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this episode of Metaphysical Soul Speak. If you feel like you want to get in touch with me to send me messages or even participate in the show. I mean, you know, you don't have to have written a book or something. You could just be a spiritual truth seeker. You know, someone who wants to have a conversation about something related to spirituality or the ascension or traditions or even an ET abduction experience. I mean, or channeling anything at all. Please shoot a message over to me at anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical. You might have to download the anchor app. It doesn't take up a whole lot of room on your, on your phone either. So, It's interesting, yeah? It's all very interesting. Yeah, I've given you guys a lot to think about. (laughs) But if you you recite the pattern on the trestle board and know it to be true, feel it viscerally in every 
cell of your body, every fiber of your being. It can cure your crazy. (laughs) It can calm you down and it can relax you. But I've given you enough to think about, and that's all I've got to say about that. (laughs) I love each and every one of you. Thank you for listening to my show, my little podcast. I'm really grateful that I'm able to do this and share my knowledge and wisdom with you. (laughs) I'm grateful. I'm grateful for every moment I get in which I can record another show. So, I love you guys, and that's it. That's it. Love is all we need. Remember to always believe in the impossible, guys. But now I am signing off with peace and love and joy and the high vibes <laughs> of the holy fifth dimension <laughs> until next time Metaphysical Soul Speak is run on sponsors and listener support. This means listeners like you. If you are so inclined to support my efforts and my little podcast, please visit me at anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical and pledge an amount of your choosing today. Thank you.